hello and um, welcome back to Autism and Me. This is Velbaria, your inspiring autism advocate for Autism and Me vlog series. Um, I apologize for not able to submit my videos in YouTube because of uh, so much um, singing gigs and um, choir gigs, rehearsals, and of course, um, lack of time. And I admit that I have a lack, uh, lack of time commitment to post videos because I have running out of concepts. And um, for all the of all the concepts that I've chose this time is about. Hmm, what am I talking about right now? It's about Magnificat Anima Mea. Are we singing it right? Magnificat Magnificat Anima Mea Nomino. That's right, Magnificat by John Rotter. And if you were to ask me why I love Magnificat, my first impression. Uh, anyway, it can be a review of the choir piece, but if you ask me why Magnificat by John Rotter, well, it's the musical structure. <laughs> it is by John Rotter, and as you can see, um, with orchestra, with solo, mezzo soprano, or soprano solo. And it is predominantly used by sopranos. Or the solo part. So what makes me say that, um, speaking of Magnificat, uh, so far, Magnificat is the first song of the, um, of the whole Requiem. So for now, I would uh, tell you what makes me, you know, um, love to sing this fantastic um, song called Et Misericordia. So, Et Misericordia means like a shepherd with his lambs. So, probably, it's um, uh, it's a, uh, based on my understanding, it is a very, uh, a variable, a uh, variable, you know, song, uh, soundscape. It has a variable soundscape. It's not just sticking or limited to one, one key signature, but four, if I'm not mistaken, says four um, key signatures going until going back to the home key of A flat major. It's in the key of A flat major with a time signature of three fourths. And um, um, actually, when I'm uh, my experience singing at Misericordia, uh, before singing at Misericordia by heart, uh, I've heard of this at Misericordia by my friend who is a voice major like me. And she is older than me. She graduated in my college and um, she sang this solo part and uh, like uh, my first impression of at Misericordia was okay and then after you know looking at the program it's at misericordia by john rotter and then i made the research on youtube and it's like oh it's from magnificat and um it's from magnificat by rotter and then i came to listen to the recording of at misericordia many times um another one is uh Ezurientes. um let me focus first on the Et Misericordia because this is the topic, this is the pinnacle of the topic in this vlog series. Uh, so much for the first impression and its first experience, but with that kind of recording, uh, going back to the recording, um, the recording of Et Misericordia, listening to the recording, so a recording of Et Misericordia, and I don't know who the singer is, this made me inspired to learn Et Misericordia by ear. And then when I received this um, this last year, um, because it was sung in a concert in my college, in which I wasn't able to do it because of Canadian tour and American tour whatsoever, but and lack of commitment in attendance, so at least it's still with me. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's. A, 
it's a full-time position for solo soprano because the solo soprano the role of the solo soprano in the et misericordia is the foreground in the first um let me count first i can't ana analyze it but i'm gonna share it um in the first um there's one two three four four eight um eleven eleven and uh 11 measures. Okay, sorry. Uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. In the first 16 measures, the soul soprano is the foreground, while the 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 tutti, which is the altos and the, I mean the tutti of the sopranos, altos, standards, and basses, the S A D B part, is the the foreground, while the soprano solo is the background, and um. Um, and then it goes the the melody line, the misericordia, which is the the foreground this time is the soprano solo. Until um, measure twenty seven, twenty eight, Me until measure twenty eight, then the alto goes. That's the role of the soprano solo, and then. Um, and then going back to her background position, being the background of the of the rehearsal C, um, thirty-seven, pick up of thirty-six, Magnificat, which is the background. Um, the soprano is always the background this time, and um, um and Anima mia domino, Anima mia domino, yeah, the. Um, she plays this time as the obligato because of the the required stretch of the notes, just like descant. So she plays a descant here in the rehearsal C, and then um, until um, going letter D, yeah, letter E, letter E, she becomes the foreground, and. 68 she goes as the background so um going back to a to a the a pattern of the song structure f she's now the foreground and then she goes back to the um to the background position in the measure 86 and um of course going to letter g I'm um, 90 okay measure 90 I mean yeah measure 91 she's going to be the mid ground and she's going to be the foreground and measure 95 and um background to measure 99 99 uh, measure 98 I'm sorry measure 98 um measure 98 no um the soprano soloist's um role in the measure 95 to 99 is the foreground and then the tutti goes singing and then the soprano solo answers back to measure 105 and then the, the tutti will answer and then and then another with the pianissimo with this one it's probably it ended the decrescendo it ended um 108 it will go on to pianissimo sorry I'm not correct okay I'm correct 109 109 That's the end of the whole song of Emisa Cordia. So going back to this analysis. Um, so that's for, that's my analysis on the Emisa Cordia. But bear with me. I am no choir conductor. But I'm sorry if I inserted accidentally the analysis of Emisa Cordia. Even if it's not really included in the content. But it is already a supplementary lesson for all of you. Based on my understanding on this repertoire. So what makes me sing Emisa Cordia again? So sorry again if I mixed you up. So much for the talking of the analysis, but let's take it seriously. Okay, so it was really uh, last Saturday. I mean, yesterday. It's 
kind of a shocking moment to everybody in the choir. Like, who goes wants to volunteer for the solo? Hey, it's me! He doesn't need to say it anymore because I know what he's going to say. I know what he's going to say. Taking over the atmospheric cordial solo soprano part and I took it by heart and by brain, by mind. Because after I rehearsed last Wednesday, I came home and rehearsed solo consistently. And um, it was Saturday. And uh, yeah, the Saturday feeling yesterday like I'm shaking. Let me set it, Claudia. I take too much vibrato on it. So it was um, many, many hours has passed. So I. Um, me and the course organist um, sorry, recorded the solo soprano part in which I inside could study the tutti part the SATB part the soprano line which is I am in the position of the soprano line so I can feel also what will be happening what, what was going on and then it was recently I rehearsed once more at the Sericordia and it makes me happy once more because after a lot, I mean, last night after um, intimidating moment, like a threatening, like a, like a banging in my chest, bang bang, gorilla. Kidding. Like, I want to sing this one more time. I want to sing this old, you know, this kind of song line in my mind, the part of power of love. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Sometimes I get frightened, but I'm ready to learn about the power of a light. That makes sense. Yeah, going back to that misericordia. Yeah, when I so much threatening feelings happened, but I will never soak into that negativity. That make me motivated. That make me motivated to work harder for more with Et Misericordia and the Christmas songs for the concert and of course with um, with my repertoire in Hong Kong after Christmas carols because I'm piled up with repertoires and of course with the choir in my school. Um, Et Misericordia had played a lot of major roles in my life that it recovered my hard feelings and voila i'm still back in track after a lot of hours spending time reflecting retreating myself and um oh dear and you know it makes me happy but i imagine myself competing for the voice of the philippines i would use et misericordia as my grand finals repertoire along with the majesty and glory of her name because that's the best songs i've ever ever heard in my life and not all people could appreciate that but it needs to to listen it needs to be heard because that's the word of god and that's um that should that should be heard yes that should be heard because that is important in our spiritual life not so much for this kind of side sermon but yeah when I sang at Misericordia that really made me cry <laughs> inside and um that made me cry so much inside deep down inside my heart and I can bang in my chest bang bang but it will touch my chest so soft love so soft <laughs> yeah but, yeah, seriously, when I sang Et Misericordia as rehearsal soloist in that song, it made me feel like, oh, jeez. Oh, Jesus Christ. Like, oh, Lord, thank you that my choir conductor listened to my heart and listened to my intention, taking over the Et Misericordia role, uh, Et Misericordia solo soprano role, and oh, my gosh, this makes me want to cry after I got home from the rehearsals but I don't wanna I don't wanna <laughs> overthink with that but um if ever I you know if ever if ever I will be given such chance to sing at Misericordia 
solo soprano role, solo soprano role, I mean solo soprano part, I am gonna be happy doing it because that becomes relatable to my life and um, it became inspirational to me and of course it makes me love the serious music and um, it makes me want to love the the whole Magnificat of Rotter and of course I'm praying so hard that I can sing this solo soprano part and you know it will take time to study the part so you know you know what I mean so, um yeah I, I mean, that really inspired me to sing at Misericordia after the experience um, becoming the rehearsal soloist for the at Misericordia and that made me proud that it you know it recovered my um, wounded heart <laughs> after an imitate intimidating moment a threatening moment but of course I will never never contaminate the negativity in, in my heart because that's not good and it's a waste of drama a waste of time too much drama is a waste of time and energy so um so far at misericordia is one of my favorite rather um I mean, Rutter's work one of my favorite from Magnificat because it's vocally suited me better it suited vocally to my range and to my timbre and then I am proud of it um, singing it with uh, justice with conviction with love and compassion with elegance and I hope I could give myself a, 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 a try to sing it um, to take the solo soprano part for the Etwis Recordia and I'm so happy to take it without doubting a lot. So, by the way, so much for that and um, I know it took, uh, took you too long listening to my video vlog and um, I would like to thank all of you for making, uh, making yourself um, patient enough. Uh, I know it's kind of hard as a, as a singer, as a choir musician, that I've been into hectic schedules and I would promise myself to work on with my time posting my vlogs and videos and my covers. And thank you so much again for listening to my story. I know it may be disorganized to you, but bear with me due to my... Um, hyperactivity attitude a hyperactive attitude and excitement that is absorbed in my my system <laughs> yeah thank you so much and have a great day good day bye